Hello, this is my presentation on the character of Jock Grant Menzies in the first three chapters of Evelyn Waugh's A Handful of Dust. Our first encounter with Jock's character is in the first chapter. There are two key areas within this chapter I want to discuss. Firstly, his relationship with Brenda, and secondly, the juxtaposed nature of Jock and John. Starting with the first, our first encounter with him is due to his prior relationship with Brenda, as he is identified by Mrs Beaver as a man that everyone thought she would marry. This brings into question how good Jock is in retrospect to Tony and Beaver. The comment Jock makes to Beaver about her being a grand girl is something repeated by both Tony and Jock later in the story when both are drunk. This repetition could suggest the effect that Brenda has on both men after she starts to distance herself. Secondly, moving on to the second point, which is the clear emphasised contrast placed upon Jock and John Weaver by Wall. He looks for the reader to actively compare, and this begins when Wall introduces us to Jock for the second time as the man who is wanted by all at all the social events even after one meet, in contrast to John Bieber, who continuously fills the gap at any social event. Jock, however, is far less dependent on the London social front, as he does not appear as desperate as John, as he chooses to have oysters at Brad's. Again, there is another comparison between John and Jock, as Jock is accepted by the men in the bar, as although he did not take part in the war effort, he was still considered to be all right, as they clearly liked him far more than they did Beaver. War also attempts to criticise Beaver for his lack of money within the English London social scene, as he emphasises Jock making Beaver pay for a drink, and creates a mockery of this as he goes on to explain how Beaver nearly died of it. Walt criticises on the higher position Jock holds and highlights to the reader how awful a match both Brenda and John truly are. Walt's choice of the name Jock in Jock's position to the name John is fairly apparent in that obviously he's trying to make the reader identify the differences. This is similar to what Shakespeare does within King Lear, um, cross comparing Edgar and Edmund. And we see the same in The Homecoming by Pinter, where we see Max and Mac. This stark contrast in personalities and cross comparison to their names is something that War is overly emphasising and, as mentioned before, wants the reader to actively criticise and comment on both parties and their behaviour. In chapter 2 we see very little of Jock's character, however when he is mentioned War over emphasises his presence. As you see from the quotation, she danced with Jock Grant Menzies and two or three old friends. The fact that War pinpoints and over emphasises Jock by mentioning his name as opposed to mentioning the other friends would suggest that we see Brenda's character trying to make John Beaver jealous as Beaver is aware of her history with Jock. Again we hear a comment um, about her relationship with Jock and how everyone has assumed that they would end up together as Everyone now within the London social scene is aware of her relations with John Beaver. However, they are all incredibly surprised as they state how had she broken away with Jock Grant Menzies or any other young man, it would make more sense as it appears that Jock is far better or far better suited to Brenda with regards to any remote romantic affiliation. Wall's third chapter, Heart Cheese on Tony, really is quite dramatic in the devastating 
scenarios that Tony faces in his life and um, from finding out about his wife's affair with John Beaver to losing his son. And we see him then turn to his supposed friend, one of whom is Jock. Uh, Jock first encounters Tony in a bar in London, um, stating that he had not seen Jock, um, he had not seen Tony for some time. However, within this chapter, we see a flaw in Jock's um, personality and character, as he becomes this quite aggressive male when he is rejected well, stood up by the female as he states that it's the last time he would ask that bitch out. It's quite juxtaposed to the sociable nature of Jock that is perceived to be his personality in the previous chapters. Furthermore, within this chapter we see his desperation to see Brenda or any female in that he is no longer the jock that we have seen in previous chapters and he beca and he appears to be taking on the role um, more so of John Beaver. This is more apparent um, when both are drunk and um, both discuss their affection for Brenda referring to her as a grand girl and how they are both very fond of her. Also we see that after Brenda speaks to Jock and explicitly states that she does not want them to come and see her, he ignores this this request and is actively pushing Tony to take him to see Brenda as he states that we better go to Brenda's and um, she's expecting us. This desperation and this thirst for Brenda, or it could possibly be any female, really criticises Jock's behaviour. Um, and War transfers this in the gothic style of nominal determination, as War then, for the first time, um, discloses Jock's full name as Mr. Jocelyn Grant Menzies. Now, Jocelyn is commonly understood to be a unisexual name, however, um, it's more commonly used as uh, the name for a female. And we could explore this further by, by stating his desperation for females is simply to hide his own femininity um, as he gives himself a nickname, Jock, which has so many masculine connotations to it, as the butch kind of aggressive male. However, in reality, his real first name is far more flowery and far more soft and delicate. Um, this becomes even more prominent in, when we as the reader are first introduced to his female partner when he is visiting Hetton. Um, we see that she is called Mrs. Rattery. However, she is both tall and erect, and both are very um, masculine adjectives. And it could suggest that his his feminine nature is is attracting him to the more masculine type of woman, in that he tries to um, cover or hide um, his feminine kind of personality. Um, later on within the chapter, looking at the time where we see the death of John Andrew, it appears that Jock is trying to carry out the right action in terms of what Tony had wanted. However, it would appear that War seems to comment on Tony's ability as a father as although War states that no, it was no one's fault and how everyone had decided this, later on in that scene we see that the doctor states it was if it was anyone's fault it was Mr. Grant Menzies, um, and we know that he was simply following the direction of what Tony would have wanted. However, we see that if um, All had listened to Ben, who appears to be the stereotypical father male figure that John Andrew would have survived. However, people were not listening and they chose to take Tony's advice, which clearly was flawed, which further emphasises um, Ward's distaste for Tony and his 
in his lack of abilities. Um, Tony then later on appears to, you know, feel awful for Jock, um, as he is the one who has to deliver the news to Brenda. It's it's apparent that he is not as um, he doesn't show his upset of John Andrews' death as opposed to caring about Jock and him having to deliver the news to Brenda. This could suggest either jealousy or or just a desire to desperately see her. However, the interaction Jock has with Brenda um, identifies a huge flaw in that Brenda mistakes um, the death of John Andrew to be the death of John Beaver. However, when she is um, when she realizes that it was actually her son that has passed, we see a sense of relief, and and Jock doesn't seem to know how to react to this. Um, and finally, we see that Tony then becomes reliant on, with, on Jock as he's been living with him for the past three weeks. And this would suggest that Jock appears to feel guilt for um, his actions on the, on the hunting ground in that he is embracing Tony. However, we still question his decency as it is in fact him who is aware of um, Brenda's affair with with Beaver and being the good friend that he supposedly is, he did, he had not told Tony. However, all in all, we see that Jock's character is just as flawed, and his his name as Jock is merely a facade for hiding his femininity within his own name. Through Jock, War seems to attempt to identify that although he is not perfect and he is not the ideal man that we perceived him to be um, within the previous chapters, he War is able to actually recognise and show that he is act that Jock is actually actively trying to um, appear better than he is and is striving to be the better person which in contrast to Tony is far better. Therefore, my character analysis of Jock would be that although he is flawed in trying to hide his femininity by overemphasizing his masculinity, there seems to be an element of goodness or good intent within him. Thank you for listening.